دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم بحال ونور الحجام انطياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما نفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا سميع الدعاء يا مجيب يا مجيب رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we are in the month of Ramadan, quite often we forget that the month of Ramadan is the month of taqwa. As much as it is blessed, we also need to remember that this month of Ramadan, we must attain as much taqwa as possible and we must continue to attain the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 131, chapter number 4, Allah said, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَإِنْ تَكْفُرُوا فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَنِيًّا حَمِيدًا And we have instructed those who were given the scripture before you and yourselves to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you disbelieve, if you disbelieve, then to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And ever is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free of need and praiseworthy. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَنِيًّا حَمِيدًا And of course we know the verse 183 of Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 where Allah said that O you who have believed, observing the fast is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may attain taqwa, attain piety. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَقُونَ in order for us to attain taqwa, the way that we have during the month of Ramadan is through fasting. Because fasting is a course to taqwa due to what it uh, what in entails of suppression of the soul and the subjugation of the lusts, the desires. The taqwa is something during the month of Ramadan when we are fasting, we train ourselves to suppress uh, all the good, uh, uh, all the evil actions, and we train ourselves to suppress the desires. Okay, even though those desires outside the month of Ramadan or within the month of Ramadan outside the duration of the fasting, it is halal for us. But that, for that particular moment, we are suppressing it. Why? Because even with that suppression of uh, soul uh, that would be led towards desires, we are attaining taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The siyam or observing the fasting in this noble month was not legislated except for the actualization of taqwa. Rather, it is one of the things that assists most to achieve taqwa. Subhanallah. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, who was the student of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Siyam has an amazing effect in preserving the physical outer strengths and the spiritual faculties and in protecting them from any imbalance that brings to them harmful elements, O servants of Allah, which if gain ascendancy will ruin and spoil them. Meaning the harmful elements, may Allah forbid, if they overpower us, then we will be from the, from the ones who are ruined, who will be from the ones who, uh, whose good actions are actually uh, abundant. And it has a remarkable effect. As Sheikh Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala continued saying that it has a remarkable effect in eliminating all the harmful entities. Anything that is bad, it would be eliminated by attaining taqwa that prevent them from being healthy. Therefore, siyam, meaning observing the fasts, preserves the health of the heart and the limbs. Okay, it's not just the outer, uh, outer appearance that we need to be worried about, but we need to be worried about what is in our hearts. Okay, what, in our, uh, what is in our hearts? So, Siyam actually preserves the health of the heart and the bodies, uh, uh, the body parts, and it returns to them 
all that which has been stolen from them at the hands of the desires and lusts. It is from the greatest aids in attaining taqwa as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the verse of Surah Al-Baqarah that is verse number 183. Al-Alama Shaykh Abdurrahman bin Nasr al-Sa'di rahimahullahu ta'ala who was the teacher of Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthameen rahimahullahu ta'ala uh, he mentions in his tafsir uh, uh, tafsir al-Sa'di he mentions when it comes to the term لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ the end of surah uh, uh, the end of verse 183 of surah al-Baqarah so he mentions uh, he comments uh, he mentions uh, in his tafsir that indeed fasting is one of the greatest ways to attain taqwa because it comprises of implementation of the commands of Allah and abandonment of his prohibitions okay it comprises of taqwa in that the fasting person abandons what Allah has forbidden him from food, drink, sexual relations and the like, which his soul inclines towards, seeking to draw closure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this and hoping for his reward by refraining from it. This is taqwa. Another point that he mentioned, the fasting person, meaning as saim trains himself to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is another meaning of taqwa. So he abandons what his soul desires, even though he has the ability to carry out this act while he is fasting, due to his knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, watching him. So here we have al-basir, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to think about or a shaheed the all witnessing Shaykh Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala continues saying that fasting meaning the siyam constricts the pathways of the devil anything that leads to the way of shayateen siyam actually blocks that way as he flows meaning uh, uh, the, 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 the shaitan shaitan he flows through the son of adam like a passage of blood majradam Thus, through, uh, through fasting, meaning through siyam, his influence is weakened and the person commits less acts of disobedience. The fasting person normally increases in acts of obedience and acts of obedience are from the traits of taqwa. When it comes to the acts of obedience, the, siya, uh, the, saim, the person who fasts, you would see him usually more or less increasing in the acts of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the sa'imin, the people who are fasting are in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any acts that are of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is also leading us to gain taqwa to of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Sa'adi mentioned that when the rich person tastes the pain of hunger, this causes him to be sympathetic to the poor and destitute. Another way to gain taqwa is when you are sympathetic towards the poor people and the people who are in, uh, in, in desperate need of food and drink for that matter or any shelter or so on and so forth, which actually allows us to do a charity, uh, a charity to give uh, for in, the, in, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Taqwa of Allah is to obey him by implementing his commands and abandoning his prohibitions. So this is the shari uh, definition, the technical definition. The, the linguistic meaning of taqwa is for the servant to place a shield between him and uh, between himself and what he fears. What he fears, what would a normal person fear? Anything that would cause him uh, uh, harm. Therefore, the servant having taqwa of Allah means for him to place a protection between himself and what he fears of Allah's anger, what he fears of Allah's punishment and Allah's wrath, which will shield him from that. This is not possible except by performing acts of obedience and abandoning acts of disobedience. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his servants with taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah is to be feared and he is hoped for. And all good that befalls the servants as uh, befall the servant is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands with taqwa meaning taqwa fear of the fire which is the final destination for those who oppose taqwa of Allah and follow their desires. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا النَّارُ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Then fear the fire whose igniting fuel is men and stones, the fire that was prepared for the, disbel uh, for the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Tahreem verse 6, he said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا قُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ O you who believe, ward off yourselves, meaning protect yourselves as well as your families from a fire whose fuel or the igniting fuel is men and stones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes commands, with taqwa of the day of resurrection, the day of recompense, the day of reckoning, and the day of happiness or misery. The day when the muttaqun, the people of taqwa, will receive their reward and the criminals who opposed taqwa will receive their punishment and torment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 281, 281, he, he commands us saying that, And be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then every person shall be paid what he earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. Rasulullah would advise his companions عنهم, with taqwa of Allah. If Rasulullah dispatched an army, he would advise its leader with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it related to him personally and also to treat those with him very well. When Rasulullah delivered the sermon on the day of sacrifice in the farewell sermon, Hajjat al-Wada, uh, al he advised the people with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the people needing this advice and its great importance and benefit. That is why the Salaf al-Salih rahimahullah ta'ala, they attached significant importance to the actualization of taqwa in their own selves, first and foremost. And they were committed to accurately explaining its meaning and its foundations. They continuously used to advise one another with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turjuman al-Quran, the encyclopedia of the Quran, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who also was known as Hibr al-Ummah, and for whom Rasulullah s.a.w. made dua, Allahumma faqihu bil-deen wa allimhu ta'wil. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give him the understanding of the deen and allimhu ta'wil, meaning the understanding of al-Quran al-Kareem. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said, the people who possess taqwa are those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment, which is earned by those who abandon what they know of true guidance. And they hope for mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is earned by affirmation and belief in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala said, the people who possess taqwa are those who protect themselves from what they have been forbidden and they perform what has been made obligatory upon them. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala said, one of the tabi'een, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not fasting during the day and standing in prayer at night and then spoiling this obedience with something uh, opposite to that, that is disobedience. Rather, taqwa of Allah is to abandon what Allah has forbidden and to perform what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu said when he was commenting on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 103, where Allah said, Fear Allah, meaning have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared. Regarding this, he said that it is that Allah should be obeyed and not disobeyed. Allah should be remembered and not forgotten, forgotten. And Allah should be thanked and not shown in gratitude. Talq ibn Habib rahimahullah ta'ala said, Taqwa is that you act in obedience to Allah upon light from Allah, upon the guidance of Allah, hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you abandon the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon light from Allah, fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, this particular statement of Talq ibn Habib rahimahullah ta'ala was mentioned in a book called Jami' al-Ulum wal-Hikam by Ibn Rajab al-Hambali rahimahullah ta'ala in pages 296 and 297. When a man said to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Fear Allah, 
Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu responded by saying, There is no good in you if you did not utter this. And there is no good in us if we did not accept it. Which means both of the parties had to abide by taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until their last breath. When it comes to the place of taqwa, it is in the heart. Muslim, Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala recorded, recorded a hadith that is in his sahih, a long hadith of Abu Hurairah ta'ala anhu, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-taqwa ha huna wa yushiru ila sadrihi thalatha marrat. Piety or the taqwa is here and he pointed to his chest three times. Ibn Rajab al-Hamali rahimahullah ta'ala said, Since the origin of taqwa is in the heart, no one sees its reality except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum, wa lakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. Indeed, Allah does not look at your appearances, nor your wealth, but he looks at your hearts and actions. It is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, rahimahullah. Uh, it is recorded by Imam al Imam al-Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, rather. And it is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Another narration is, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsadikum wa la ila suwarikum. Now this narration that I just mentioned here, it is recorded also by uh, Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala. That is why many times a person may have a beautiful appearance, wealth, position or leadership in this world, yet his heart is derelict and out of taqwa. Whereas the one who has none, none the above, has a heart full of taqwa and he is nobler in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this takes place more often. It is mentioned in a book of uh, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali called Jami' al-Ulum al-Hikam, page 626. Taqwa, or servants of Allah, has numerous benefits. And it has many fruits which are reaped by muttaqoon, the people who are of taqwa. From the fruits of the taqwa in this life are the attainment of beneficial knowledge. Allah said, Allah." So be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will uh, Allah teaches you. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Anfal, so it is 222, uh, 282, that is the verse number, and it is in Surah Al-Baqarah, that is chapter number two. Allah said, In Furqana, chapter number eight rather, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you fear Allah, he will grant you Furqan, meaning a criterion uh, to differentiate between the good and evil. Chapter number 8, verse number 29. Another benefit that we can take from uh, having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is an escape for, uh, from trials and tests and the attainment of beneficial sustenance by the servant from avenues he does not imagine. As Allah mentions, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whosoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeps his duty to him, he will make a way for him to get out from every difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way for him to get out from every difficulty. And he will provide him from sources he never could imagine. Another benefit that we can take from uh, uh, another benefit that we can take from taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the people of taqwa achieve the love of Allah, achieve the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, and with this they attain success and triumph. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allaha yuhibbul muttaqeen. Indeed, Allah loves the pious, uh, the, uh, the pious people, the, uh, the people of taqwa. Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 4. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 194, He mentions, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهُ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that Allah is with the pious people, the people of taqwa. Allah mentions, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Chapter 8, verse 69, Surah Al-Anfal, Allah mentions, Fear Allah, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ and fear Allah so that you may, you may be successful. It is in chapter 2, verse 189. This particular verse is also mentioned in chapter 3, verse 200. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ 
So the fruits of taqwa in the hereafter are numerous. In the akhirah, the fruits of taqwa are countless. From them are the successful attainment of Jannah, nobility, and a praiseworthy outcome for them. As Allah mentions, in Lil Muttaqeen in the Rabbihim Jannat al Naim in Surah Al Qalam, verse 34, Allah mentions, Verily, for the pious, for the Muttaqun are gardens of delight, gardens of Jannah with their Lord. Then Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 212, Allah mentions, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حساب. But those who fear Allah are above them on the day of resurrection. And Allah gives provision to whom, so ever he wills, without account. Then Allah said in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter number 7, verse 128, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and the blessed end is for the people of taqwa, for the people of piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ فِي مَقَعَدِ صِدِقٍ عِنْدَ مَلِيكٍ مُقْتَدِرٍ Indeed, the pious, meaning the people of taqwa, people of piety, will be in the midst of gardens and rivers. In a, in a seat of truth, فِي مَقَعَدِ صِدِقٍ In the seat of truth, i.e. Jannah, near the omnipotent king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these two verses that we read, it is from Surah Al-Qamar, a chapter called the Qamar, that is before the chapter Ar-Rahman, okay, verses 54 to 55. So this is what we, uh, uh, what we have uh, when it comes to attaining taqwa. The more taqwa we gain, the better our life will become. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most generous, the Lord of the magnificent throne, while we are in this splendid season and noble month, the month of Ramadan, to beautify our hearts with the adornment of taqwa and to make it a provision for us in this life and the day we meet him. Allahumma ameen. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته